this I gotta I gotta I gotta admit to you guys. I did not expect to do a whole lot of moving and shaking when I decided to do this segment. But that's just what this segment has become because dudes are making cases for themselves so early and often in this game, or I should say in this in this season, that I just have to take into account what they mean for their teams and what their teams are doing. So we're gonna go number five to number one right quick. Uh, number five, I've got Darius Shepard, who was the XFL uh, Special Teams Player of the Year for the Battle Hawks, also doing pretty outstanding work for them uh, this year. He leads the league in all-purpose yards. He's also the only guy in the UFL to have over 300 yards uh, uh, kick return, 80 yards receiving or punt return, and 100 yards, uh, excuse me, 100 yards receiving or 80 yards punt return. So he's getting it all in. Also, if Darius Shepard means something to you, it's because he played North Dakota State, won three national championships, right? People talking about Trey Lance probably should have been talking about Darius Shepard. Number four on the list for me, uh, D.C. Defenders quarterback Jordan Tamu, who was the XFL Offensive Player of the Year last year. It doesn't feel like they win football games if Jordan Tamu is not their quarterback at D.C., full stop. Like, he has been so responsible for what Fred Kais can do with that offense, especially since they can't run the ball. Like, they— had Abram Smith lead all the spring football last year, frankly, in rushing, and he's not there. And yet and still, they're still finding ways to win because Jordan Tomu is back there throwing passes. Number three on the list, I got Michigan quarterback E.J. Perry, who put together what I thought was the best performance, again, that he's had since he joined the Michigan Panthers last year. Uh, 16, uh, what, 16 or 19 for 208, 60 yards uh, rushing, and then three total TDs in that. Also, not afraid of the check down, right? Like I, I enjoy how much Joel Klatt loves to talk about quarterbacks, but nothing makes him angrier than forcing a throw. <laughs> and I always get a kick out of it. So when I saw EJ Perry check the ball down five yards to Marcus Sims, and then Marcus Sims turn around, break six tackles on the way for a 66 yard touchdown. I'm going, that's Joel's guy right there. <laughs> like let your playmakers make plays for you. That's what Marcus Sims was able to do. Uh, super fast. And I was really excited to see him get a shot in this league, but also that it's coming together for EJ in a way that it finally feels like he's not pressing. He's able to play, but again, offensive line gave him a little bit of time to work through his progressions this week. And that seems to do wonders for everybody. Number two on the list. I got Arlington Renegades quarterback, Luis Perez. Perez is the only quarterback to throw for 700 yards or more through three games this season, and nobody else is within 100 yards in him. I think he's got 737, and I think Tom moves at 627. So he's been great. I mean, they call him King of Spring because he's played in all these leagues, but he's also been good in all these leagues, right? When he was with the New Jersey Generals, coached by Mike Riley in 2022, they made it to the divisional round uh, in the playoffs. So he won championship uh, after a trade in the XFL. He has played the last two years on playoff teams. That's that's it, right? If he can turn this team around from their 0-3 start, I look out, man, because that that offense is is absolutely getting after it, right? You, they got dudes at tailback, they got dudes at wide receiver, they got dudes at tight end. I mean, I'm thinking about thinking about Debian in the backfield. I'm thinking about Sal Canella at tight end. I'm thinking about Tyler Vaughn out on the numbers, right? The offensive line I'm, I'm particularly attached to because there's three Oklahoma guys out there, right? I think they really got a shot with Luis Perez back there. And it thrown for 290 in a loss that wasn't your fault. Yeah, that's going to get you high on this rankings list. And then number one, I got Adrian Martinez, which I understand if you feel some kind of way about this because this is his first start. And you might make the argument that, well, RJ, if he wasn't good enough to start the first two games, why is he number one on your rankings list? Because that's how Skip Holtz has drawn it up. I think if you give Adrian Martinez the same opportunities you give Matt Corral, you're probably going to get these results because the results are 344 passing yards and like 60 yards on the ground, leading the entire league in rushing, even though you only started one game and having the first 300-yard pass performance in the history of the UFL. 4-5 speed. Like Adrian sees it. He sees it with skip. Uh, this offense feels very much his skill set, the one that we got to see when he was outstanding at Nebraska. And even through the first few weeks, at Kansas State before he had to go out with that injury. I think this is a great spot for him. And I really think that if you're going to make a decision in your skip holds, this is the guy. Like this right now, I, I just don't see Matt Corral taking this back from Adrian Martinez unless skip holds gives him an opportunity. If you like what you've seen, consider subscribing to the number one college football show on YouTube, the Fox Sports app, or wherever you get your podcast.